Bound club. That was an interesting conversation. Thank you very much for joining us for one more round, and welcome back to another episode of Film Club. I am one of your hosts, Andy Harrison. Like... To my right, as always, Andy Dalton. Hello, I feel like it was a cheap intro, but go on. Oh, it was a pretty good intro. I like that one. Every single week in Film Club, we invite you guys along to watch a film with us. Uh, this week, episode 26, we have been watching... LA we... Confidential. Oh, no, the drum roll. We'll get there. We'll drum roll and we'll get the image. LA Confidential. Um, courtesy of uh, my friend Mike at work. He's a bit of a film guru and he's going to kill me if he sees it. Love. Referencing. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, che cheers, Mike. So can we talk about Mike all episode? <laughs> uh, and Alex as well. Alex is the one that introduced me to a film club and he's the one that recommended next week's film. Next week, yeah. Can you say uh, Alex is the one that introduced you to film club? Um, LA Confidential. <laughs> it's his dad's favourite film. I was asking him, I was like, did I get it from you or did I get it from Emmett Paul? Because there's a few people in my life. You've got my dad, you've got you, but you later on, when, when I found out you actually like film, Paul Goldring, Alex Lawton, and a couple of others. And they're the four, like, these are really good films. Like, Paul introduced me to Dead Man's Shoes. Um, Drive, who introduced me to Drive? Or was it you? No, I think you'd already seen Drive when we were talking. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, and Mike's become a new film recommendation. -y person. He's the one that said, watch the Royal Tenenbaum. Go on, Mike. So, yeah, so LA Confidential, it's based around... Um, three detectives um, or police officers, narcotics kind of thing. And it's like, a good shout. <laughs> it's them, uh, them in the precinct, they have a captain. Can we clarify, every single episode where we start, and I do like this, and Andy goes, good shout, it's me starting the stopwatch. Because <laughs> we need to make sure that we try and keep our runtime low. Um, so yes, you have three detectives, a captain, um, you have a, a journalist, um, all like, and, but it's mainly based around the three detectives played by Russell Crowe, Guy Ritchie, Guy Ritchie, not Guy Ritchie, Guy Ritchie? Guy Pearce. Guy Pearce, I always get those two mixed up. Guy Ritchie's the director who did Snatch, Guy Pearce is, um, the one I know him most from is The Time Machine, but he's actually in Iron Man 3, he's the buddy. The guy in this film. Um, yes, Guy Ritchie. Uh, Guy Pearce. Guy Pearce. <laughs> Shit. And um, Kevin Spacey. Now, um, and it's just, it's about how those three, they've got their own kind of motivations yeah. in the career, and it's them and what they're doing amongst police corruption and looking for this, uh, was it called Night Owl? The... The heroin, 50 million worth of heroin. No, Night Owl in. was the, it's the coffee shop that everything goes down in. Right, okay. That's the Night Owl, I think. So Andy, right, I want to just jump in like straight for you. This, for me, this came, when I watched it and I was like, holy shit, Andy did a film, when, well, we both did a film, but it was Andy's idea and there was this really good uh, piece in it, this really good kind of uh, film noir kind of thing in it. It was oh, a student yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I always remember you were really going on about like, you love film noir, this. This be it film noir or, um, uh, what's it called, neo-noir, I thought this would be your wet dream, this film. <laughs> what, what, how was it? Yeah, like, I don't, I don't absolutely have a... I don't love An film noir, neo-noir, just out, out blue. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I love some of the film noir, neo-noir influence in here, particularly the, as soon as they introduce the femme fatale. <laughs> yes. You're like, all right, with, I know with this With the blonde is going. hair and stuff like that. You've got thing. that kind of, like... Well, even the typewriter and Donnie DeVito, uh, Danny DeVito at the start. Yeah, exactly. It starts with a narration. There's a typewriter. It's a really good it's intro. About, like, it's about law enforcement. You've got the guys who are all from like LA. It's got that kind of like heated atmosphere to the whole thing. Introduce the, the femme fatale. And there you go. You've got this like wonderful neo noir tag to the whole thing. This, coming off of our last episode that was The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Given there's again some, some like parallel in like places they're set, some of the stuff that's going on, not whole hog but there's small parallels going on what a wonderful film this is like yes. this is out of the blue I'd never, never watched other confidential before I'm so glad I did I was going to say I'm, I'm kind of glad that we um, it kind of came as a recommendation through because I was thinking you know what you, you will buzz because this is this I was thinking this earlier today um, can I tell them next week's episode you can tell them whatever you want does, does it have to come up here no, but we'll do it later. So next week's episode, we're doing recommendation for Alex, it's Turbo Kid, a film that neither of us has seen, it's on Netflix. This week we're doing LA Confidential, which I've, you know, I've seen only once before, but it's been a long time, like a good three years. And this is why I love doing Film Club. Yeah. This is why we did it. We got films that have not only critically acclaimed, but films that we've seen, films that we want to revisit, um, good examples, you know, taxi driving and stuff like that. LA Confidential, I didn't realise how good it, like, I remember watching it before, and I always remember that end scene, it was fantastic. Um, I always remember um, Guy Pearce and uh, Russell Crowe against one another. Um, and even like Kevin Spacey's like kind of 
drooly kind of, uh, you know, talking like usual suspect style or yeah. American Beauty kind of style. Um, typical Kevin Spacey, just fucking incredible actor. And I was just like, when I revisited it again, I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow, wow. And then you've got Turbo Kid as well, which in its, we'll speak about next week, which is a whole kind of other like, this is why I enjoy doing it. It's recommendations, it's these films, it's these, it just gives you a good chance to look at it, um, not critique it as such, but... Through a different lens. Take a step back. And Alex, uh, believe it or not, when he said about next week's film, he said, do you know what, I sat watching the film club and I watched this Turbo Kid, I found myself actually thinking about why I like it and I was like, thank you. Thank you, this is why we do hey, it. Hey, phone call's working. Well, exactly. It's like, this is the whole point. Do you want to get people to take a step back and question why they like a film? And then Alex started telling me why I like the film. I was like, what can you use in your points later on? That is awesome. Isn't I love it? that I it know. is kind of working. So, yeah, so it's... Um, to all 20 of our subscribers. <laughs> so far. Um, to all 20 of you, we love you. <laughs> we can be one of them is me. <laughs> So, yeah, well, it was actually probably you, because um, we're cool. Um, no, but LA Confidential, it was... Um, I think you hit the nail on the head straight away, which is cast. It fucking is. It's it's incredible. I, I'd like to know who the captain is. It was on here. Um, which captain again? It's, it was Kim Bassinger. I remember when Alex was on about it, because he loved LA Confidential when he when he learned that we were doing it. He was like, mate, mate, Kim... This is Alex, Alex talks, he goes, mate, Kim Bassinger. Mate, any time. She could be any age. She, she'll always be attractive. <laughs> and he does that voice with a shake in the head. <laughs> and um, it's um, James Cromwell. Hill. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he had an Irish twin to him, didn't he? Yes. He must have been in well, Ireland. Uh, oh, New York. Like, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Was Kevin Spacey also doing an Irish twin? I don't know. I wouldn't say. I didn't pick that up from him. It was certain things where I was like, are you trying to put like a slight accent on there? Like, it definitely wasn't heavy. If it was there, yeah. it was very subtle. He wasn't doing a particularly good job at it. But yeah, someone, yeah. someone correct me. Like, if, if you're shouting at me right I now through the screen, no. correct me. So, yeah, so let's just go straight to the casting, which, alongside the story, is probably the best thing about this film. It starts, like, having, like, knowing very, very little about the film anyway. Yeah. We've got a cool thing over there. Thank you. So anyway, sorry about that. It was just uh, we were discussing the pipes up there that were making the sound. A little bit of an audio problem, but yeah, as always. Um, <laughs> so one of the things, like having known nothing about LA Confidential, going into this, my first surprise, voiceover, Danny DeVito. Yeah, I know, right? I know. Danny so, DeVito, what knows, a tone that sets. He knows Danny DeVito um, a lot from uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, don't you? Yeah, and he, he, up, he, he was, like, my, verse, my first early kind of exposure to Danny DeVito was probably Batman Returns. Oh, yeah, the Penguin, yeah. Um, and then what was that thing he did with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger where, like, they're meant to be twins? I oh, know that sounds one, ridiculous. Yeah. What is that? No, no, I know which one you're on about. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's an oldish one, yeah. Um, so, like, getting Danny DeVito to voice over this, <laughs> like, just sets a tone straight away. So, I read about... The, the story in the screenplay and how it's going to come back because it's based off a book, a screenplay based off a book. And I'm sorry to go back to my wiki ways, but this is off wiki. And it was, um, it says something to do with the producer or the director said, we want to look at, um, we want, we, I think it was a director who is, bear with me a second, it's Curtis Hansen. Um, and he said, look, I want Russell Crowe and I want um, uh, Guy Pearce to Austral, Australasian, because one's New, um, New Zealand, one's Australian. So kind of Australian, New Zealand actors. I want these in my film. And they would be like, ah, they're not they're quite new sort of thing. Um, but no, they got the film for you. Say, no, you, know, you, you get the guys you want because, you know, you've got an idea. And that's how they got, it says, that's how they got like bigger actors like Kevin Spacey at the time and probably Danny DeVito. So it was like, um, you know, the, the, the relatively unknown one here, Russell Crowe and uh, Guy Pearce. But then you have like the Danny DeVito, you have the Kevin Spacey. Um, you know, Kim Massinger, for example. I'm not too sure. Wait, if this, you, this, just, this whole cast is so brilliant. It really is. There is really no, there's is. no weak point about no. it. And everyone, everyone, even, the, even the, like the, the little, uh, the, the not as big. Yeah, characters. like even a third the way through this, maybe halfway through, I'm sitting there going, "Oh my god!" Everyone has like a defined character. Yes. No they one, do. no one is like the generic police officer. No one's a generic tech. Everyone's got like a little something about them which makes them like their own character. And this is what makes the film absolutely brilliant. I think it's um, it's that combination of great casting, great, great acting, and great story and writing. Yeah. Each I, I mentioned it towards the start. Each direct uh, detective has their own role, their own ambition, their own uh, backstory as to do. Yeah. You got um, you got Russell Crowe, who's you know his, his, his father beat his um, his father beat his mother. 
and so he's you know he's against women beaters. Yeah. Um, so he's like you know the bra one. You got Guy Pearce who wants to live up to his dad's name, but secretly he wants to find out who killed his dad. And then you've got Kevin Spacey, who doesn't really have much... What I love is the character arc of Kevin Spacey, character arc of Kevin Spacey, how he goes through the film, he doesn't really do... You know, he exposes celebrities and he gets paid for it and stuff like that. Then towards the end, when he, when he teams up with Guy Pearce, he starts thinking, you know what, I want to be a detective. And fuck me, he's a good detective, isn't he? Because yeah. he like, kind of is like, ah, you know, I'm too good for this. Yeah. And then he realises why he became a detective towards the end. I, I think that's, to me, one of the best character arcs of the film. Uh, you've got the captain who, you know, he's the one that's leading the corruption, uh, the way, he, you know, gets rid of people. It's just, it's superb. It's so well wrote. It's so it well is. wrote. And I love that first, that first chunk, you're trying to figure out who exactly is going to be the protagonist because, <laughs> yeah. like, you've got Guy Pierce and he seems like a nice guy, but then, like, a the, bit of a dick as well. So then, yeah, then you get seen where, like, he's a bit of a dick. Yeah. You've got it's Russell Crowe, who seems like, again, a nice guy, a bit of a dick. Mm. And you get Kevin Spacey, who, again, who's like Not a nice guy, dick. a bit of a dick. Yeah. And you kind of go, oh, okay, we're doing like an ensemble cast sort of thing. But no, when you get to the end, it turns out they're actually totally just pulled the wool over our eyes. It's a buddy cop film. How brilliant is that? Wait, it's, it's an incredible it's like, buddy cop film. It's one of the best buddy cop films it really, ever. Really, really, and massively. Like, those two, when you find, like, I should have seen it coming from a mile away, because it's basically, it's basically uh, intellect and brawn, mm. and that that's uh, Guy Pearce and Russell Crowe. Mm. Um, and all it is is basically right, brawn way, is learning intellect, and intellect is learning a bit of brawn. Russell Crowe's brawn. Yeah. And then Guy Pearce's Guy intellect. intellect. And yeah. it's like, they're both learning a little bit from each other. There's that bit that totally solidifies it, which is when... What, where he's just uh, had a fight and they sat down in the filing cabinets? It's like they're trying to pair them against each other. No, so I'd say, that, I'd say that's the beginning of their, their yeah. buddy copness. The bit that solidified it for me is when I think it's Russell Crowe is on his way out the, out the oh, door. Keys. And he, a guy just goes, keys. It, it happens again. I've realised this. The synergy between the two is next level. Like there's one part in the house and he's just like, and he just goes to throw a shotgun, turns around and shoots yeah. him. And it was just like, that's just quick, you know, like, fuck, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, awesome. One, one of my favourite buddy cop films I think I've ever seen. Really? So good. Like, and the fact that it just it comes out of nowhere. You, like, you've got Kevin Spacey film. You don't expect Kevin Spacey to be, to be killed off. Yeah, you like, don't. No, you don't. You're absolutely it's right. It's not even like he's killed off, like, early on to, you know, bring them together so you have an entire film with these two together. He goes quite a length of the film. He goes all the way through. A good, like, four he fifths. He has a good arc, and, like, he's developed as a character. And, and he's one that leads to the... That death comes out of nowhere. Goes, Roller to Massey. <laughs> yeah, and like that, that la again, that. just that last little like, I'm going to help them out. Yeah, yeah. And I love that when the captain goes around, uh, it's Guy Pearce and he goes, oh yeah, can you just chase leave for me? It's just um, when Kevin Spacey's character died. I should really have the character names here, but I'm just silly. Um, and he goes, Roller to Massey, and Guy Pearce just goes, yeah. something like that, and he goes, like this. Yeah. And it was just like, oh. And like one thing. You know, it's, it's not put on a plate for you. It's not said, oh, the captain knows about uh, Roller Tomasi. Because yeah. the only, you, you literally got to think in your head, well, the only person, he, he's a quite an intimate conversation. He, he opened up to Spacey. It's, um, he only told Roller Tomasi like, to one person. You, you kind of got to make that yourself. You can't just think it's not handed on a plate to you. It, it's, that's why he's thinking that way. He's like, I'm not told anyone else that. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in this film. If you don't pay attention, yeah. it can be quite difficult to keep up. I mean, the nice thing is that they do kind of have that, that satisfying wrap-up at the end where Guy Pearce just lays everything on I the love, floor. I love that thing all, like that, whatever they do. Uh, oh, Russell Crowe's in the car, and Guy Pearce, you know, he comes out, he's got his arm in a sling. Oh, yeah. And they do that, and it's just, yeah. it's just like, oh, it's, it's like proper manliness. <laughs> I was it is. To use that it's word, great, and like, again, like they're using the cinematic language in a way which totally works in terms of revealing little bits of information to the audience and making it satisfying. Yes. Um, the twist, the big twist that they find that the police captain is the guy doing when he kills Kevin Spacey comes like, it's a total shock. Mm. And then right at the end, it's really well you are convinced that um, Russell Crowe is dead. And then when she turns up at the guy's, uh, Guy yeah, Pierce's yeah. speech, or oh, his, his, his medal exception, um, you're kind of like, oh, he's going to be like a, a weird ending where he gets the girl instead. You'd think that, and to be honest, I forgot the original time I watched LA Confidential, I forgot Russell Crowe survived. Yeah. So when I saw him in the car, I was like, shit, yeah, I forgot about that, get in, get in. <laughs> it's I was so thinking, good. Because I was, I was gonna, I was, honestly, I was gonna be a bit pissed off that Guy Pearce got the girl. Not pissed off, but like, ah, oh, Russell Crowe deserved her. Then he was in the car, she was driving him off, I was like, oh. And like, proper Russell Crowe slaps her. And like, yeah, he, yeah. he beats her. You shouldn't like that guy at that point. And yet it still works. Yeah, and yet weird. you still are kind of rooting for him because you kind of get where it came from. You get, you get that immediately he regretted it because he felt like he was becoming like his father. Yeah. You totally get his character motivations. And yet the film is the film is a wonderful mixture of being plot heavy 
but intermingling plot heaviness with character motivation. Yes, yes. Oh, I love it. It's, love the script it, it, of this. Yeah. The script is marvellous. So, the directing as well. Yep. That's so well directed. Like, the way he's just got everyone together and got them to work so well. Um, and you mentioned about the captain before, how that the um, the twist it came across. You see the captain, you see he was a bit of a... Yes, he's the captain, he's got to lead everyone, he's going to be a bit of a figure yeah. of authority. You think about the start scene, when they, they start the, 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 the things with the Mexicans, the, the, the fights. Even the captain, when Guy appears, uh, you know, he, he grasses on everyone. Yeah. The captain, even he's like sticking up for his man, he's just like, you know, it's a bit of a dick move, man. Good, you know, you're going to have that. So you think the captain's like, although he's a captain, he's still, I hate this phrase, one of the lads, yes. one of the policemen. Yeah. So when you see him set Russell Crowe after Guy Pearce, at that point, you're not thinking he's done it uh, maliciously. You're just thinking he's just done it. He's like, ah, let him lads be lads, sort of thing. Yes, yeah. Um, and you don't see that he's actually trying to let Russell Crowe kill yeah. Pearce, which is, it's really deceiving, but in a really good way. It, um, it, it pays off, the, the ending pays off so well. Or even the, the last, what, half an hour, three quarters of an hour? Yeah. It's so and like thrilling. The the director has managed so wonderfully to pace this film out yes, because there's it's, so it's much stuff going usually. on. There's all these characters we've, about we've Bullet, mentioned. For example, pacing. There's also like there's also like corrupt politicians. Yeah. There's corruption in the police force. There's this whole thing with like the prostitutes that are made to look like uh, film uh, stars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's the whole thing with like his ex partner who died was seeing this girl who turns out to be one of the prostitutes who gets identified by her mother. Her mother has another body under her house. Like there's all this stuff going on. And they managed to tie it all up in a satisfying way they really at did. the end. So it's a kind of film where you've got a lot, um, for example, maybe The Godfather or Goodfellas. You've got a lot of, you know, a big cast, an ensemble cast. Um, no, but you've got a lot of names going about the place. Um, even The Departed, for example. Yeah. You've got a lot of people you've got to keep in your mind. So it's a very kind of, you've got to focus kind of film. Don't watch that with someone who maybe kind of talks a lot throughout the film. Why are you looking at me? I don't know, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I hate that, by the way. Yeah, 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 I do. So make sure you watch it and you focus on the film. If you do, hopefully you already have watched it. Um, there's another part I really like to go on about. So we're on about today, we're on about the John Wick uh, films because the second one's just come out. Yeah. And it's some of the best bits of uh, gunfighting out there. It probably is. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I'm yet to see it. I'd like to do it at film clubs sometime. Um, that end scene where they're in the house and the shooting, there is some incredible and realistic gunplay in the sense that he shoots his shotgun twice, I've got to reload, I've got to shoot my revolver, I'm out of bullets. There's none of this, do, 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 yeah. do. Oh, I'm out of bullets, I'm gonna to have to punch. There is some realistic gunplay, there's some reloading, there's some incredible, incredible gun scenes in that. I didn't, moment. I didn't count, but maybe they stretch it a little bit. On the shotgun, I think so, yeah. but not on the revolvers. Because they made a point of him throwing the clip to the guy, didn't they? Oh, he's a pistol. Maybe he's, he's, a pistol giving, he's giving a, a But either way, the fact pistol. is, the, it's something that films don't include nowadays. And yeah. I think it's a cheap trade off, you know, like yeah, just gunfights. I like ones where you've got to think tactically about your shots. And funny enough, while we're on that which scene, which John Wick does, my one gripe about this film mm? is right at the end when all those police officers are coming in and they're gunning them all down, those guys were technically innocent. Like, well, they were they, were they police officers? Or do you reckon they'd do the new mob? Because he said he's going to start the new mob. So was it police Maybe. officers? Because if I you think about them, they're undressed. Yeah. So you, you could argue, I yeah, thought, they're I innocent. I thought, were well, they not dressed in police uniforms? Well, they, where, you know, could nick the police uniforms. It I leaves it open. It'll be down here anyway. You guys can have a look. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forget you put stuff up there. <laughs> uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, you, they could be innocent, but they could also be mobsters because he's technically starting a new mob. You know, it's killed off the old one. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a, to use one that we use for goodwill hunting, it's such a well-rounded film. It's such a experience it such a you come out you start that film like wow this is thrilling from the start you know you, you, like I'm, I can get into this you come at the end like wow what an amazing film I'm glad I got that sort of thing it's absolutely just... and like you know what I'm like when it comes to like action yeah um and as soon as like a lot of action starts off if it's not if it doesn't have some sort of place purpose something interesting by I just slowly zone out but that action sequence at the end yeah. is so it's, deserved. Yes, yes. Like they actually, it's not just random action, let's have a payoff. They earn every single inch of that. They really do though, they really do. And it's it's like the little moments, like even when you get shot and it doesn't normally happen, excuse me, um, and you think, oh no, what's gonna happen? They're gonna be down. Russell Crowe takes two or three shots to get himself yeah. down. But does he push him out of the way? He does, he pushes him out of the way and takes a shot. Yes, I think he does. Um, and the score, I'd like to go about the score of the film. Go for it. Fantastic, um, it's just a, uh, Jerry Goldsmith, I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. I thought they fit the you know the noir kind of tone that they're going for throughout yeah. the whole film just superbly well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. So, Jerry Goldsmith, cheers to you. One of maybe 
No, I was about to say maybe my favourite Russell Crowe performance. One of my favourite Russell Crowe performances. That and like maybe Gladiator. I was just that's the one that came yeah, to mind that yeah. stopped me from saying favourite. It's um and considering the, these were like, uh, you know, the, the, the producers were like, yeah, I don't know if you can use Guy Pearce and Russell Crowe. Guy Pearce, I don't think he's used enough. I think I think he's a great actor. Yeah, he actually plays that really, really well. He's superb. Um, given the character could have very, very easily been like a totally unlikely. And we can't we can't take it away from this does not pass the Bechdel test, but you can't take away, um, as mentioned, James Cromwell. Um, and Kim Basinger and even Danny DeVito's their performances as well as is we mentioned it, before. Is Super. it Basinger or Basinger? It might be Basinger. I, I have no idea what she's stunning by the way. Alex is right. Alex, you're right, mate. But she gives a good, good again. Gives a good performance. She's superb Has, performance. Like, again, acting with her face. I love she's the fact amazing. that there's this wonderfully subtle performance and a lovely, wonderful way of quickly telling stuff about the characters. The fact that when she is with Russell Crowe. She lets him into her actual bedroom. Mm. What a wonderfully simple way of just showing the connection these yeah, two characters yeah, have. Yeah. The fact that she has this like display house downstairs where she sleeps with everyone else, and yet she takes him up there, like just so quickly connecting with those two characters. It's um, yeah, it's it's a very good film. If you want something that's directed, uh, wrote, it's a really good adaptation of a screenplay. Um, casting is superb. It's such a well-rounded film, and the music as well. You know, absolutely, it's, it's is. absolutely great. So please, it, this so, is one of the best ones I've actually. Thank you, Mike. Film club. Cheers, Mike. Cheers, Alex, for introducing me in the first place, and cheers to you. And if you guys want to let us know what you thought of Ella Confidential, you can do so either in the comments down below, or you can hit us up on Twitter. Are you concerned? No, I'm just all right. I'm just looking around. Okay. You know, I get really panicky. I'm fine about this bit. Why? I don't know, you start getting panicky about... Oh, I was just looking over there, just, I'm always, I'm, I'm so worried that the audio is not coming oh, through. Oh, um, Hopefully the audio's been wonderful for you guys. So yeah, you can hit us up on Twitter, let us know in the comments below. Um, Fuck you, next pipes. week in Film Club, we'll be back once again, and we are going to be looking at what you mentioned earlier. Alex Turbo Kid. Turbo Kid, although, not Alex, just Turbo Kid. Alex Lawton recommended Turbo Kid on Netflix. So yeah, it is on Netflix. Um, at least in the UK, we don't know what it's like in every other country. I know there's, there's tons of films which aren't available in various countries. Um, so go check it out. It's a really interesting film. We cannot wait to talk about it. See you guys later. Rollo Tomasi.